Good Monday morning, brothers and sisters. This is a prophecy report entitled, Imposed. The February issue of WorldNet Daily's Whistleblower magazine features wokeism, America's official state religion. WND's editor says, quote, Long the world's most Christian nation, America today is being taken over by a new official national religion, one being imposed on the entire populace by every major societal institution, from government, media, and big tech, to academia, entertainment, and business. It seems to me that WND's editor believes the U.S. government, social media, big tech, Hollywood, large corporations, and others are imposing their religious beliefs on America with the result that false religion is spreading in what was once the most Christian nation on earth. Powerful, tyrannical unbelievers are now imposing their false religious beliefs on America. They are transforming the world into a world without God. And sadly, many church members are going along with it, doing nothing or choosing to remain silent. But it is more than powerful, tyrannical unbelievers imposing their corrupt religious beliefs upon America and the world. They are also imposing a corrupt government upon the world against the will of multitudes without a vote. They don't believe it, but they are preparing the religious and governmental stage for the two most powerful people that will rule on earth during the tribulation period, the false prophet and the antichrist. It is a fact and the world will likely cross the point of no return at the World Health Organization Assembly meeting on May 21st. The nations will be given a period of time to put the new global laws into practice and start enforcing them. The tribulation period is coming, Isaiah 24, and people need to be sure they are rapture ready. Here are more events that seem to relate to current events. Concerning the imposition of false religious beliefs upon America, on March 3rd, California's Pleasant Grove High School staff and administration sponsored a drag show with six students performing in drag. All students were required to attend. Gender-confused drag queens wore wigs and dresses, danced on the gym floor, removed part of their clothing, and promoted the gay agenda. School officials responded to complaints by saying that the drag show was held in full compliance with student codes of conduct and existing requirements for on-campus events. Concerning the spread of false religious beliefs around the world, on March 16th, the president of Uganda blasted the West for imposing the LGBT agenda upon his nation. He urged the West to mind its own business when it comes to the issue of homosexuality. Concerning the elimination of borders to create a world government, U.S. Department of Homeland Security keeps telling Congress the U.S. border is safe. On March 16th, U.S. Border Patrol Chief told members of the U.S. House Homeland Security Committee, quote, the U.S. does not have operational control of its border. The border is either secure or does not, and someone is lying to the American people. Some members of the U.S. House Homeland Security Committee believe Ortiz is telling the truth. The Biden administration has turned control of the U.S.-Mexico border over to the drug car cartels, and they are seeking proof one way or the other. Concerning world government, on March 16th, it was reported that the Chinese president wants to create and be the leader of a better world order, a clear rejection of the leadership of President Biden and the United States. Concerning a falling away in the church on March 16th, it was reported that Pope Francis said, hell is not a place. And he implied that there is no one in a place called hell. He said hell is a state of the heart and a posture toward life. Concerning persecution of believers during the tribulation period, on March 7th, the UK Parliament voted to criminalize prayer even silent prayer, near an abortion clinic. It reminds me that Daniel's enemies got King Darius to forbid prayer to anyone but him for 30 days. 
Daniel continued to kneel in front of his window and pray to God three times a day. This got him thrown into the lion's den. God delivered him, and his enemies were ultimately fed to the lions. People who become believers during the tribulation period will be forbidden to pray to God and told to pray to a statue of the Antichrist instead. Rebellion will get multitudes killed, but the Antichrist and false prophet will ultimately be cast into the lake of fire. The pro-world government of the Netherlands has been crushing farmers with restrictions on their use of fertilizer, how many cows they can own and milk, buying up their land and more. In an election on March 15th, several pro-world government officials were voted out of office and replaced with pro-farmer candidates. It is going to be harder for the pro-world government politicians to push their agenda, but they may still get some of it through. Voters need to realize that voting against candidates that support the NWO may be the only way to protect themselves. Concerning a CBDC and the tracking of all buying and selling, on March 8th, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell told the U.S. Financial Committee that the Federal Reserve will launch a new service called FedNow in July 2023. When FedNow goes into effect in July, Powell said any bank in the U.S. will be able to immediately transfer money from the Federal Reserve to a customer. Cointelegraph, a publication that covers cryptocurrencies, blockchain, internet financing, etc., said FedNow could take the place of a central bank digital currency. Joe Brown, a financial advisor, said when FedNow becomes fully functional, every bank that participates will have an account with the Federal Reserve, and they will be just one step away from establishing a CBDC. Brown added, make no mistake, a central bank digital currency is coming, and it looks like this new Fed Now service is just the launch of the infrastructure. A CBDC is coming, and it will require a digital ID. A digital currency, an ID, could be just a few months away, and it will take time to enroll banks but tracking all buying and selling only needs to be in effect by the middle of the tribulation period. Concerning the temple, it must be rebuilt to fulfill many prophecies. The abomination of desolation. The Antichrist must sit in the temple and say that he is God. The Antichrist must stop the animal sacrifice at the middle of the tribulation period. It is the opinion of some prophecy teachers that the rapture will take place before the temple is rebuilt and the animal sacrifices are resumed, <clears throat> are resumed there. This would mean that if we are close to the temple being rebuilt and the animal sacrifices being restarted, we are even closer to the rapture of the church. During Old Testament times when the Jews were wandering in the wilderness, the priest that carried the tabernacle set it up, took it down, and served there had to be descendants of Aaron, and they had to be cleansed with the water of purification made with the ashes of a red heifer without spot and blemish. In like manner, those that rebuild the temple and serve there in the future must be descendants of Aaron, and they must be cleansed with the water of purification made with the ashes of a red heifer without spot and blemish. This has been a big problem because the Romans destroyed the herd of red heifers when they destroyed the Jerusalem and the temple in 70 AD. Israel has had red heifers that were perfect when they were born, but whether any remained perfect until the time they reached the required age is debatable. On September 15th, the Temple Institute announced that they have five perfect red heifers in their possession that were raised by a Christian rancher in Texas. One rabbi said, this is history being made, prophecy being fulfilled. Another rabbi said, we are entering the days of the Messiah. Jews danced in the street in blue shofars. On September 27, 2022, it was reported that a plot of land that meets the requirements for animal sacrifice was purchased 12 years ago. According to the September 27th article, a qualified red heifer could be sacrificed on the Mount of Olives as soon as 13 months. 
according to Byron Stinson, the Christian rancher that raised the red heifers in Texas, Christians can support the sacrifice in rebuilding of the temple because the blinding of the Jews will cease when the Antichrist defiles the temple and all Israel will hear the gospel and get saved. Now here is the latest. Byron Stinson was recently interviewed by CBN News on March 17th. It was reported that he said, we believe that it is very likely that the ceremony, the sacrifice of an unblemished red heifer, would happen somewhere in the area of Passover 2024, out to the possibility of Shavuot on the Christian calendar 2024. Stinson added, somewhere in that timeline between Passover and Pentecost of 2024, the cows, the red heifers, would be old enough and would be the proper timeline for that ceremony. According to the March 17th article, Rabbi Mamu, the priest that bought the land on the Mount of Olives 12 years ago, said the red heifer must be sacrificed by a priest that has not been defiled by touching anything dead. The Temple Institute has nine priests that were born at home and have never been to a cemetery or touched anything dead. If just one of the red heifers is unblemished this time next year, a priest could sacrifice it and construction of the temple could begin shortly after. Now it is possible that none of the red heifers will qualify or that the Israeli government will not allow a red heifer to be sacrificed on the Mount of Olives. But we know there will eventually be a qualified red heifer and Prime Minister Netanyahu's new government is more religious than past governments. This could be it, but radical Islam and the globalists that cater to them and want to do away with the Bible will go crazy. This could lead to war, an Israeli victory, and an agreement to rebuild the temple. Concerning natural disasters increasing in frequency and intensity at the end of the age, on March 18th, a 6.7 earthquake struck in Ecuador and northern Peru. Initial reports listed 13 dead and an unknown number trapped under rubble. On March 21st, a 6.5 earthquake struck Afghanistan and Pakistan. Initial reports list 13 dead and more than 300 injured. Finally, are you rapture ready?